Welcome back to the Six Round Podcast. This is the second part of UFC 158. This is the main card. Uh, we'll be breaking down, obviously, all the fights. Uh, let's start off with Mike Ricci versus Colin Fletcher. Mike Ricci is coming in uh, with a 0-1 UFC record. So is Colin, 0-1. Uh, overall, uh, Ricci is 7-3. Colin is 8-2. Um, what are your thoughts, Mad Dog, on this fight? I have to agree. I think there's going to be a, a pretty good fight. Obviously, um, Mike being minus 280, I think he, he'll be good in a parlay. Um, and I actually will be parlaying Mike uh, with some other fighters later on in the main card. Um, next fight, we have in the middleweight division, Chris Camozzi versus the infamous Nick the Decision Ring. Um, Chris Camozzi is 5-2 in the UFC. Nick Ring is 3-1 and one in the UFC, supposedly. Uh, he's 13 and one overall. Chris Camozzi's 18 and five. This is kind of a a coin flip, and mostly it's, uh, in my opinion, the reason that it, it's a coin flip without even looking at their um, at their previous fight. Uh, it's just because of, of the judges with Nick Ring. Uh, Nick Ring is a little bit more of a favorite, minus 115, and Chris Camozzi's minus 105. So I'm actually going to stay away from this fight. Um, avoid it as much as possible. I'm just going to enjoy it if you can enjoy any Nick Ring fights, but. Uh, What's your thoughts, uh, Mad Dog? Uh, I completely agree. You know, uh, MMA betting one on one in Canada, you do not bet against Nick Ring. If you're anywhere in Canada, Nick Ring's going to win. In fact, all you have to do is survive 15 minutes. You're going to shit out of Nick Ring. As long as you make it to the final bell, you win. Sure. That's all it takes. Hart McGee beat the crap out of Nick Ring. And, and the last round was a 10-8. Dana White was shot. Nick Ring won 30-27. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree. And let's get off off topic a little bit. I, I'm curious because I really haven't made, done the research on, on on this particular topic. But has Nick Ring come out of the closet yet? No, I think he just has a really bad list. <laughs> really? I don't know. I I I have never heard a list that bad because like whenever they were announcing Liz Carmosh as the first, I'm like as you know the first uh, homosexual um, or lesbian woman to come out. I was like, well. I thought Nick Ring came out, but I guess, I mean, I tried to research and I, I couldn't find anything of him coming out, so I guess I guess he does have a really bad list. <laughs> I, I thought, I, you know, I just thought he was he was gay from the beginning, but all right, moving on. Um, the next fight is, uh, basically, it starts off the welterweight tourney in the main card. Uh, Jake Ellenberger versus Nate the Great Marquardt, who returns after losing his, his uh, title this year. Um, 
Jake is seven and two in the UFC, and Mark Ward is ten and four in the UFC. Um, Nate's actually the underdog at plus one forty-five, and Jake Ellenberg is the slight favorite at a minus one sixty-five. Who do you have, Mad Dog? We, we know all gamblers are. Um, now, moving on to the co-main event of tonight's evening. And I, honestly, this fight, I can break it down. I can analyze it. And I cannot pick someone. I, I have to pick someone, obviously. But it's Carlos Conner versus Johnny Hendricks. Carlos Conner is coming at as the slight underdog at plus 115. And Johnny's uh, minus 135. Obviously, we know Carlos is 5-2 and two in the UFC. And Johnny's 9-1 and one in the UFC. Great UFC record. Um... I, the more I look at this fight, man, I mean, I've seen every every video there is to watch on these guys, and it can go either way. Johnny can come in, uh, get a flash knockout, or Carlos can, uh, you know, keep him at bay and win a decision. Um, I don't think he can. He's gonna submit Johnny Hendricks, you know, Johnny being the the, the wrestler that he is. But I I'm gonna pick Carlos Condit just because my gut tells me to. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny knocks out Carlos Condit. And, you know, he, he was the first. He was the first to knock out uh, John Fitch, and you know, no, everybody said that John Fitch. You know, you couldn't knock him out, and then bam. So. Well, he 
doesn't really use it that much. He uses, he uses he's like Chuck Liddell, he uses his wrestling to keep standing. And he's really one big standing at John Carl O'Connor, especially coming off a fight. He trained a year for GSP. And uh, probably the best shape of his life, totally focused. I think GSP said that uh, Carlos was the best fighter he'd ever fought. I don't know. Are you confident? Who's your confident pick for this fight? You know, someone who you I'm going to grab a quarter really quick. I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Tails, uh, Johnny Hendricks. You're going with Johnny? Enough of that fight. Let's talk some uh, GSP versus Nick Diaz because obviously everybody's talking about how Nick Diaz is inside George St. Pierre's head and uh, how that's going to affect him in this fight. And I think that's complete bullshit. I think that GSP is going to win a very dominant fight against Nick Diaz and shut up all the, the criticism. Uh, I mean, I can go on into later. I want to hear what you have to say first. Oh, there's a lot. Are you sure you want to get some more out? Because I can go on forever about this. Man, well, I mean, we this is this is the main card video, so I guess we can spend as much time as we fucking want on this fight because I have a lot to say about Nick Diaz. Uh, first of all, people who say that Nick Diaz... Um, is a better striker than, than George St. Pierre. All right. Nick Diaz is a better... I don't know how to say that. His boxing, he's great at boxing. The thing is, it's not his his uh, technique that makes him better. It's his timing of his punches. Like, if you watch Nate Diaz versus... Uh, I know that it's, that it's not Nick, but if you watch Nate Diaz versus Donald Cerrone, Donald Cerrone's striking, in my opinion, is a lot better than Nate Diaz, but Nate Diaz has this timing. Like, it's, it's a weird thing where, where like, um, Donald Cerrone's going to come up and punch, and Nate just, bam, all of a sudden he's getting punched in the face. Like, they, they have this this thing where, where they uh, pepper you, as, as Joe Rogan says, and uh, they, they just throw your game off. Like, you're, you're never comfortable in the fight, and I think that's the advantage that Nick Diaz has on the, on, on the feet. But um, against GSP, Nick Diaz sucks against wrestlers. And GSP, in my opinion, is the best wrestler in the welterweight division, if not all of you, um, MMA. So people who say, oh, when you when uh, GSP takes him down, he's going to get submitted. No, he is not. George St. Pierre, Jake Shields is, in my like, two times or three times better than Nick Diaz on the ground. And he didn't do anything against GSP. Oh, I'm telling you. I am telling you, Jake Shields' Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is so much better than Nick Diaz's. Um, and he's not going to be able to finish GSP. So, he has top control and is really good chokes. I don't think his overall BJJ game is. I think Jake Shields is the better wrestler. But I definitely think Nick Diaz has more explosive BJJ for sure. He's the more pure BJJ fighter. Jake Shields is more of a wrestler who turns his game into BJJ, whereas... Well, Nick Diaz off his back is dangerous. Like all of his transitions, he'll go he'll go for an armbar and transition right into a, a triangle, which is which is you, you know what you should be doing. But um, the, okay, the thing. He does not instigate takedowns. The only time I've ever seen him instigate a takedown was in the last round against Carlos Condit, and after they last beat him, he took him down. He Agreed, agreed. I agree that Nick Diaz has a better ground game than Carlos Condon. He does not have a...
Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, the, the thing with this fight it is it's been fun to, uh, you know, listen to the lead up to the fight. That's about it. Um, when you get down to it, you... I guess, you know, speaking, I am a GSP fan, so speaking as a GSP fan, I guess it's biased from the very beginning, but if I, you know, don't look at GSP as anything else but a fighter, um, there's, I just don't see the competition that, that everybody else is talking about, like, hyping up Nick Diaz so much, it's just not gonna, I, this is the most clear-cut, um, fight on this card, um, in my opinion, besides, you know, I think, uh, Dillashaw, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's just GSP. I'm, I'm so caught. He, obviously, he's, he's going to be in my parlay. Um, I don't know anybody who... I mean, any, anybody who's smart, um, for that matter, who's, who's betting Nick Diaz. <laughs> well, well, oh. Oh, yeah, because we know Diaz isn't going to win a decision against GSP. And, you know, I don't care. I, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, man. If Diaz wins... I, uh, fuck, what did I, oh yeah, I have to give someone a fucking shirt, I, th that's how confident, I, like, I'm, I'm giving away shit, because this is how confident I am that GSP is going to win this fight, so, um, that's all I have to say, what else do you, anything else you have to say about this fight, because I'm, I'm done with talking about it. Nick, Nick was quoted in saying, the only people stopping is by running away or holding on, and that's what GSP is really good at, he's good at both of those things, he's really good at running away, he's really good at holding on, uh, you know, Nick does bring in a distinct advantage, and that advantage is chin. Nick Diaz is the one that you can say he's been finished twice because he only got TKs once, he got cut once. He's the one that finished once way early in his career against Jeremy Jackson. He brings in such a huge chin advantage. GSP does not have that great of a chin. He does not take a punch well. Everybody who says he takes a punch well is bullshit. Jake Shields uh, put a major hurt on GSP and with one shot. GSP's face was fucked up. He's just such a good fighter at controlling the distance and moving in and out. He doesn't hit that often. But, you know, like I said, Nick Diaz doesn't have that one-shot knockout power. He has a cumulative shot. It'll so be interesting to see how he adjusts it. But also, I think that the cardio is a, is a thing. This could, this has the potential of being a very action-packed fight. These guys will not get tired. Neither of them will get tired for 25 minutes. It'll be go, 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 go. And it really depends how GSP chooses to engage. If he chooses to stand on the seat, I don't think he's going to like what he gets. I think he's going to try and go to the ground. And people are saying how he's going to pound out Diaz and TKO Diaz. Oh, he'll hit him and Diaz won't. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it, it's that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, everybody right before GSP fights talks, talks about he only lays and prays. And then after he wins, they're like, oh my god, that was one of the most amazing fights ever. It's just the same fucking story. And um, recently, George St. Pierre, um, actually it was Faraz Ahabi who, who uh, released uh, like GSP's plan, I guess, for the future. Um, GSP uh, said that after he has this fight and, you know, hopefully he uh, beats Nick Diaz because, you know, how he says he never likes to look past uh, opponents or whatever. But after he beats Nick Diaz, he wants to um, fight the winner between Carlos Khan and Johnny Hendricks. And then if he wins that fight, Anderson Silva wins the fight against Chris Weidman. Then he wants to fight Anderson Silva. And then after that fight, he wants to retire, win or lose. So what, what, what do you think about that? He would only be like He would only be like what, thirty two years old and he would be retiring? Yeah, he would only be retired on top like everybody else should have Chuck Liddell should have done that. I think I that's why I think Van Orley Silva should have retired it whenever he uh his over his victory over Brian Sam. We have Chael Sonnen and uh fucking Michael Bisbing in, in the uh fuel or whatever uh, channel and they're like, Oh no, he can't retire now because you know he has this win. Well when the fuck is he supposed to retire when he ends up like Chuck Liddell? <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I don't understand why, why people say this stuff. Like, Vanderlei Silva was supposed to lose that fight. Like, everybody was counting him out. Uh, and you... And, no, 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 no. You specific... I, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You specifically said everybody's counting him out, but, but he's still dangerous. And uh, it, that's exactly what happened. He won the fight. And uh, he won it in Japan. Like, where else would Vanderlei Silva want to retire? Like, he won... By knockout in Japan. Come on. So, 
I mean, GSP retiring 32. He's he's a smart guy. So uh, I don't know. I guess the stars have to align. You know, all these people have to win. You know, Vanderly, uh Chris Weidman has to has to lose to Anderson Silva, and a lot of people think that Chris Weidman's gonna gonna finish Anderson Silva. So <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I guess if if Anderson Silva loses, then GSP will fight Weidman for the belt and then retire. So I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's it for this card, I guess. UFC 158 Saturday. Uh, I'll be in Texas Saturday watching this fight, and then I'll release a vlog later on. Uh, Mad Dog's gonna be in his where wherever the fuck he is right now in his cave because his phone kept cutting off today. Um, so then we return with, uh, what is that, um, Gustafsson versus... Um, Public Coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm also doing a Bellator video next week for uh, Bellator 94 or 93. What is it? Yeah, Bellator 94. So uh, a lot of things coming to the website. Um, we got rankings up. The next fight coming up. Uh, who's your head, Andre Arofsky or Anthony Rumble Johnson? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'm going with Rumble. All right, guys, so that was it. That was one, UFC 158 GSP uh, Diaz. Follow me on Twitter at IzzyBoy121. Mad Dog, where, where can they follow you? You can follow me at Mad Dog Miller, two Gs, two Gs. And also make sure to follow the podcast at The Sixth Round PC. Um, I guess you can also subscribe to us on YouTube and always check out our content on TheMMAMovement.com. And that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.